Hello and welcome to the Garage Series from Mech in Austin. My name is Jeremy Chapman. And I'm Steve Chu. So Steve, we've done a lot of stuff in terms of improving the email experience, in terms of improving OA and improving how we group functional units, groups together from a collaboration perspective across SharePoint and Exchange and Yammer, right? That's right. Yeah, it's really exciting. So all of this stuff we're going to talk about in the next few minutes, but before we get started, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false, groups provide a common group layer across Exchange, SharePoint, and Yammer. So stay tuned for the answer at the end of the show. Steve, grouping, it's always been something that's basically been beholden to the various different silos, the information databases of, say, things like Yammer or SharePoint or distribution lists in Exchange. How does groups change that? Well, groups provides basically a single DNA now across the Office 365 suite. Uh, so really, membership and identity is integrated across Exchange SharePoint Yammer, just as you alluded to. So basically, you have your, your directory service. Yep. You have all the people that are part of the directory service. And they are, they're basically working together. But in the past, it would have been maybe these guys were in a DL. Maybe they were in uh, a team in terms of SharePoint team siting, those types of things. Now we want to be able to have basically those same groups being represented, whether you're in Exchange, whether you're in SharePoint or whether you're in Yammer, because all those, all those groups should be consistent throughout all the different ways that we want to work. So from a generational perspective, if you have a team that maybe consists of people like to communicate in different ways. Some people want to do things like instant messaging or chat. Some people want to do email primarily. Some want to do you know, Yammer and, and social enterprise social networking. All of those different needs and, and different communication preferences can be met here, even with the same grouping throughout all these different properties, right? Yep, that's right. That's absolutely right. But instead of talking about all this, I know we've got some great demos that you've got prepared that we can show not only the groups, mm -hmm. but also some really cool stuff that we've talked about in terms of mobile clients, OA4, Android phone that we announced this week at Mac, right? That's right. Yeah, the groups experience is great because not only do you get it in the browser, but you also get it uh, in some of the mo na native mobile apps that we announced for uh, iPhone, iPad, and, and, t and today, oh, Android. Android so phone. So this forthcoming Android app, we're going to show it exclusively here first today on the Garage Series. So why don't you go ahead and get seated and get started for demos, and I'll come join you. Sounds good. All right. So. Basically, the groups concept, uh, we started by taking this groups concept in Yammer, which a lot of you are familiar with. That's existed uh, you know, well before today. Uh, and we want to extend that across Office 365. Uh, and of course, today, as, as Jeremy mentioned, you have DLs in Exchange, you have team sites in SharePoint, you have groups in Link. So, so we have a lot of disparate uh, uh, group objects, and we want to bring all those things together. So uh, the great thing is uh, with groups is that uh, for Yammer and Exchange, uh, we're going to show the same conversation across both. And so the reason for that is because we want to make sure that uh, whether you live in email or live in Yammer or live in both, you're able to, all users are able to work more closely together. All right, so let's take a look. We'll start things off here in um, Outlook. And you can see here that I've got my personal inbox there at the top, just as you'd expect. But now you also notice a list of groups here. These are groups I've either created or joined. And if you logged into Yammer, you'd also see the same list of groups there as well. Uh, now, there's this uh, marketing forum group, which I've been working closely on. And so if I go ahead and tap on that, uh, you can see that I've got uh, something that looks a little different from the personal inbox today. Uh, basically, we've evolved the conversation experience to be lightweight and natural. So you have uh, conversations appearing in the form of cards. And you can also quickly start a new conversation right there at the top. Uh, without having to type in the address because it's automatically uh, figured out for you. Uh, you also get this feed-like conversation here to the right, which uh, flows more naturally. You can create uh, new comments there at the bottom of the reading pane. And we've also made this experience more content-centric. So you can see here that my colleague Tejas recently read an article that he thought would be interesting to the group. So he posted a link to the, to the article, and you can see an inline preview automatically appears. 
And this is helpful because now folks in the group don't just get a plain old URL, but they can actually preview the article um, and determine if they want to read the full thing before clicking on the link. Uh, I also saw a video on YouTube that I thought the group would like, so I posted a link to that video. Uh, and you can see here that the inline preview appears just as you'd expect. But now I can even play the video using the native video player in Outlook. This saves users time by keeping them in the context of their conversation. Uh, and so we really want to make the content within conversations more engaging and expressive. So you'll not only get the, the, these inline previews in the group space, you'll also get them in your personal inbox. Now, one of the advantages to having a group is, bec is because if I add a new member to the group, he or she can get caught up quickly on what the group's been working on. Uh, because Outlook contains a history of all conversations for the group right here. It, and you know, there's no more having to uh, search for relevant email over the past few weeks and manually forwarding that to the new member of the group. Or when somebody joins that distribution list for the first time, that distribution list is several months or years old, and they're like, What's, what's the answer to my question that I've got here? And somebody thinks it's been answered a hundred times yeah. in the last year. That person's brand new. So either one, one person replies recycling bits and tries to dig up an old email. But this way, it's basically all searchable, cataloged, and you can get back to those answers through this group. Right, right exactly. It's all done for you. And, and I just want to reiterate that this conversation is the same conversation you would see in the conversation feed on Yammer for this marketing forum group. So once again, Outlook and Yammer will both show the same conversations for the same groups. And once again, it's really to help all users in your organization work more closely together. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at uh, this document experience. Uh, in addition to this group's uh, uh, introduction, this new collaboration tool, we also have streamlined the document collaboration experience, not just in groups, actually. This also works in your personal inbox. And what we've done is we've tightly integrated uh, Exchange and Outlook Web App with uh, OneDrive for Business. Um, so let me go ahead and open this document, which I posted to the group. So I'm showing it in the group space. And when I click on it, uh, basically what it does, it'll open that document using Office Online, a very rich uh, 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 version of that uh, slide, um, side by side with the original conversation here. Um, and you can do that to view. But what I actually did was I actually clicked on the edit. And so you can see this is a screen of what the edit looks like. So now not only are you viewing that document uh, in the web, you're actually seeing the um, PowerPoint online editing tool right there. And I can actually go ahead and edit this um, straight away. I can insert, uh, insert things. And so it should, it should utilize the Office Online capabilities. But not only that, it's side by side with the original conversation. So you can see here, I've got the original conversation here. So once again, this keeps me within the context of the conversation. I don't have to switch the browser or the windows to be able to collaborate on this document. I can do so straight from uh, my, my uh, inbox experience. Um, and of course, the great this, thing about the edit. Yeah, and that's terrific too. Not only that it, it popped up that window there in terms of it continuing on the conversation, but even attachments, you know, different file types, PDF files, you can view them. And in the, in the Office documents, you can edit them even on attachments, right? Right, that's a, that's a great point. Uh, you know, this works for the document if it's already stored in OneDrive, or it works in the document uh, if it's a physical doc a document classically attached to your, your email. Um, and uh, of course, you know, it works. Uh, with Office documents, it also works with images. You get the image side by side with the original conversation. Very cool. and, and the great thing is when you, when you actually edit it, it'll create a draft response here automatically. Uh, and, not, and not only will it do that, it'll, add, um, it'll attach the edited version of this document to that response. So it's taking what takes four or five clicks and consolidating that down to, to one click, essentially. Right. Um, so let's go ahead now and take a look at the calendar. I'll flip back. Um, and each group also gets its own calendar. So I've got, uh, let's see, I'm going to go ahead and pin a few of my calendars here. Uh, the calendars are right here in different colors, right? Those signify each of the different group's calendars. So each of the group's calendars is differentiated by color. Uh, and then, of course, you can overlay your personal calendar with your group calendars, or you can remove it. Um, and the great thing is um, any member of the group can add, edit, or delete any of the events on the calendar. Uh, and this is helpful because if somebody who created a meeting in the group is out of the office, anyone else in the group can actually adjust that meeting without having to, uh, to bother that, that original creator of the group uh, meeting. And then, of course, if there's a group event that's really important to me, I can go ahead and um, uh, add it to my uh, personal calendar, there you go, uh, with a single click. And so uh, if, if the group event changes, uh, it'll automatically be reflected on my personal calendar as well. And I can do that uh, with my own preference. Um, now, we also have a, a scenario where um, we, also, we, we basically have two types of groups, right? There's public groups and private groups. Uh, private groups behave 
uh, sort of like uh, the distribution list membership does today, right? Uh, the contents are only accessible to the folks who are members of the group. Right. But uh, this new concept, the public groups, we are, you know, uh, help to engage, help to uh, have users engage in open conversations. And this allows them, we hope, to discover new information and new contacts within the organization. So naturally, we've made it easy for uh, users to search and browse for public groups, but there's, um, there's actually one scenario we're really excited about and I want to show you, and that's the ability to see what public groups your colleagues have joined, right? Because we want to help users find the right groups to join. That's really important to this concept of public. So let's go ahead and take a look at the contact card for one of my colleagues, Paul. Actually, I'm logged in as Paul. So let's go ahead and take a look at um, Christoph. And you can see here that I can actually um, see what, what groups that Christoph has joined. Um, and I believe I'm actually a member of all of these. But then if I can actually, I can actually also preview the conversations for any of those group conversations by just clicking right here. Um, and let's go ahead and click through anyways. Uh, you can see this is where I can preview the conversations. And in this case, I've already joined this group. But if I wanted to join, I can do so with a single click. Now, uh, group conversations are separate from the personal inbox by default. Um, but if there's a group that's really important to me, like this marketing forum group is, I can actually subscribe to that group. And when I subscribe to the group, the group's conversations get automatically copied to the personal inbox, and the group's events get copied to the personal calendar. So I'll never miss anything related to that group moving forward. Uh, so you really have a lot of choice and flexibility here. And I just want to add a couple more points. Really, the group also comes with its own OneDrive document library in OneDrive for Business. Uh, and you can, uh, all of the uh, when you, for example, uh, edit a document in the group space, it'll automatically save a copy of that document to your OneDrive for Business for the group. Um, and that way you have, all, you have all the version control and permissioning that's done in SharePoint right at your fingertips, but in the familiarity of the inbox here in Outlook. Right. Uh, and, then, and then also you also get a SharePoint site as well. Very cool stuff, but it even goes beyond what we're seeing here on a, on a Windows machine. We can see all of these types of things of the grouping right on your phone, or on, in this case, you've got a phone here and an iPad, right? That's right, yep. So uh, as Jeremy said, we're extending this group's experience across mobile devices. So let's go ahead and take a look at the iPad first. Okay. You can see that uh, this is an iPad. And uh, for those of you who are familiar, we launched a native OA app for the iPad and the iPhone last uh, calendar year. Uh, so I've got OA for iPad here. And you can see here, it's the same list of groups you saw earlier in the browser. Uh, so group membership is completely integrated into this native app for the iPad. And if I tap on the marketing forum group, uh, you'll see, once again, uh, the conversation feed. You've got this, the card view and the feed-like conversation, just as you saw before. You also get the same features I showed you earlier, for example, the inline previews. So really, a lot of the goodness you're seeing on the browser version, you're also getting in the mobile device. And let me go ahead and take a look at the calendar real quick. Uh, and you'll see, once again, the same list the same uh, three calendars that I pinned earlier, I have pinned here as well. Very cool. So um, that's, and that's a bit more screen real estate than you have on the, on the phone, for example. So you get a few more controls, a few more things that you can do. But underneath all of that, it's using the OA code. It's using the shared code base for what we saw on the Windows machine in the browser, what we're seeing here. And we even modify that a bit in terms of layout and put the same code inside of the Android phone, right? That's, that's absolutely right. And, uh, you know, a great point about that is the fact that we can now push new features straight to the app. You don't need to download the app from the App Store because this code is the same code that you get in the browser version of OA. So users who have this app can actually get the newest features even faster without having to reinstall the app. And the only real update requirements, if you ever had to update the apps on the phone, would be like if different hooks were required for, say, notification services to get the app to talk to the phone. But like you said, it's all centralized. So now if we want to add new stuff, new features to that, to that experience, it's all within the same HTML code base. And every consuming device, whether it's the Windows browser, whether it's on the iPad, the Android phone, all of these will get that same code. Absolutely, yep. Uh, so now let's take a look at the Android phone. Like, uh, like we talked about earlier, this is a new announcement for Mech. So we're really excited about the fact that we've designed now a native OA app for the Android phone. And you can see here, I've got my uh, Android home screen here, and I'm going to go ahead and launch the OA app. Uh, and you can see that the same list of groups here that you saw earlier in the browser and on the iPad are integrated into this app. And you can see the app looks great. It looks just like the version in the iPhone and the iPad. Um, but really, it's been designed specifically for this screen size. Right? You can see that the, the screen's a little larger than the I, iPhone, but you know, we've customized it to the device. And we go ahead now and tap on the marketing forum group. Once again, you should get the conversation feeds right here. And of course, you get uh, the card view like you saw before. But really, the card view now really shines on the smaller form factor. 
Uh, and of course, the calendar, you should get the same three calendars as well, um, right there. And so, uh, so yeah, so we're really excited because what this is going to do is it's going to allow users to be just as productive collaborating with groups on the go as they can from the office. Uh, and with groups, we're unifying people conversations and content across the suite, which we know a lot of customers have asked us for. for and I think it's, it's really exciting to see just how, how OA has developed over the years. It's really one of the best web-based apps that we've had in the Office Online suite of apps. And it's got all these capabilities that we're seeing now with groups. It's got a lot of capabilities in terms of just the releases with OA for iPhone and iPad. Really exciting stuff there. And we also see, in terms of how we communicate with our peers and people outside of our peer groups even, really changing the game in terms of how all of these uh, can meet the needs and the communication requirements of basically in, any generation joining the workforce. That's right. Very cool stuff. So before we wrap up, let's have a look at today's trivia question. True or false, groups provide a common group layer across Exchange, SharePoint, and Yammer. So of course the answer was true. Groups do provide that common layer across all those different properties, whether it's SharePoint, whether it's Exchange, whether it's Yammer. I think at some point those workloads, the names that go with them will, will start to dissolve a bit in terms of having just that experience around mail, social, and however people want to communicate, right? Yeah, that's absolutely right. So we've seen a lot of stuff here. Thank you for demoing everything, brand new stuff. Uh, OA for, for Android that we saw in preview mode. We also saw the great grouping work that we've done around how to get all of these different, uh, different data, databases, all of these populated and talking together in a very integrated way across any way that somebody wants to communicate. Of course, all of this and more can be found on the ELO blog as well as the Office blog. And catch us on Wednesdays for Microsoft.com slash garage for all the latest content. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here, Steve. And goodbye for now. <laughs>